While other shooters on the market are trying to see who can Call of Duty the hardest, Far Cry 4 approaches the shooter genre from a slightly different direction. Sometimes it's fun to just blow up everything in your way with little or no reason or set of rules to follow. Here's some guns and a beautiful open world. Go nuts. Nuts, I went. For 22 and a half hours, I played the campaign to its conclusion, and according to the title screen, I've only collected 53% of the world's tchotchkes, most of which require a minor mission to obtain. For everyone out there who was worried that Far Cry 4 would just be Far Cry 3 with a few new gizmos, you were right. That's pretty much what Far Cry 4 is. Open world map, outposts to conquer, towers to climb, animals to hunt and turn into predator bait or clothes. But this time around, there are more and better guns, a few new vehicles like the much-needed helicopter, a facelift, altered UI, and a more likable protagonist. The story, believe it or not, I liked! You play as A.J. Gale, and you travel to Kirat, a fictional location based on the Himalayan regions of Nepal, to return your mother's ashes to her homeland. There you meet face to face with King Pagan Min at the brink of a civil war between Pagan Min's armies and the Golden Path, a rebel organization which was started by AJ's father. At the end of this video, after I render my verdict, I'm going to bring up a lot of spoilers, so if you don't want the experience ruined for yourself, be sure to stop after the recent videos section. The only thing I disliked about the story is the lack of seeing my actions have real repercussions on the populace. I'm often told after the fact that I'm essentially uprooting Kirat society and sending them all to hell in a handbasket, but I don't see that happening. The world looks exactly the same to me, except there happen to be a few NPCs wearing different color clothes in the fortresses I've overtaken. This is a classic mistake in writing and filmmaking. Show, don't tell. Gameplay-wise, it really is more of the same, which truthfully isn't a bad thing in this case. Yes, Far Cry 4 is simply Assassin's Creed with guns in the wilderness, but it's a pretty winning formula. You get exactly what you expect from the scenario. Bombastic characters, beautiful vistas, big guns, big map, big explosions, big animals, and if you don't like to play it loud and proud, Far Cry 4 has a fantastic stealth system in place, and a compound bow, which I almost always have to use because no one has made another decent Turok game in God knows how long. The open world gameplay and over the top scenarios and weaponry reminds me of what I loved so much about the original Crisis and what makes me sad to think about its sequels. There are no missions of follow Captain So and So and watch them open doors for you. The game gives you a location and it's up to you to figure out how to get there. Swim? Climb? Barrel through the gates in a truck loaded with C4? That's up to you. Some side missions can get a bit repetitive. Ride on this bus and shoot cars that approach you. Go rescue hostages and don't get spotted. Go kill bad guys using this specific gun. Go kill animals using this specific gun. There's no mixing of things up in the side missions. It's pretty much just copy pasta. The main campaign missions are where you'll find most of the variation in this gorgeous game. And it really is a gorgeous game. It's easily one of the best I've seen in the year. There were several moments where I had to stop and, for lack of a better phrase, Take it all in. I'll likely never see the Himalayas in person in my lifetime, and on television, they appear to just be some mountains in the background. But here they stand above you, imposing. The artistic direction taken in Shangri-La is also something to be proud of. I almost want a whole game there. The textures on the animals themselves are also something to marvel at. Elephants are appropriately elephanty. And if you happen to pick up the elephant paint pack on Uplay, you're in for a real treat. Though I wish that finding a randomly painted elephant was simply part of the game. I played through the game on hard and found it rewardingly hard. I do recommend playing it this way. It leaves just enough room for a good combination of running and gunning and mixing it up with some backstabbing. Halfway through the game, I upgraded my video card. Textures, models, shadows, and lighting all look great on Ultra, and I found myself playing with the water a bunch in my helicopter. The problem is the game suffers from seemingly random stuttering. This happened with both cards. It will be smooth, 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 and then everything will flash forward. In lesser games, this might not be such an issue, but here you're driving cars on cliffs and ATVs through forests. One wrong move and you're careening down into the abyss or aiming your machine gun at nothing. I found myself relying on the auto drive system quite a bit, which comes in super handy when driving and shooting at the same time, but for everyday A to B trips, I'd rather not need to rely on it. I also want to make note of the sometimes very long and unskippable cutscenes the game has. Having unskippable cutscenes in this day and age seems a little bit archaic. 
There's a lot to do and discover within Far Cry 4. It seems every few hundred meters or so there's something shiny to distract you. Boxes to open, caves to explore, tiny missions to take on. This is both a positive and a negative. On the plus side, if you don't particularly care for one mission type or another, the game doesn't punish you for skipping it. I only took part in one race. It wasn't my cup of tea, but I still had more than enough cash and experience points to spend on whatever I wanted. Like liberating forts and want to do it again? You can! There are missions where you can take and retake the same bases over and over again, and actually, armies will fight back and try to reclaim territories. Not as hard as they could or should, but hey, baby steps. But that also leads to a problem with the game. After I maxed out all my skills and bought everything I ever desired and painted it to my own style, I didn't care much for taking on any more side missions. That happened fairly early on. More appropriately weighted content is always a good thing. Content for the sake of content is a mixed blessing. On PC, there's an odd control scheme issue. Instead of selecting the bow and then hitting an ammo select key or alternate fire button, typically the X or V keys in other games, you need to hold down Q and then R or E depending on the type of arrowhead you want to use. Even stranger, when you have the arrow type you want, the game keeps reminding you that R will let you switch back to normal arrows. A similarly wonky scheme is used to craft and use special syringes, which I didn't even find much use for. New to the franchise is optional cooperative play, where you can team up with friends or strangers to do whatever you like, really. I played with a few random strangers, and it's fun, but didn't add much to the overall value of the game. I found myself more annoyed than anything, because I personally prefer to play stealthy, while many people appear to favor chaos. But if I brought in some people I personally knew, I could definitely see the added value. I do recommend picking up Far Cry 4. There are enough minor improvements to make this markedly better than Far Cry 3, which I was turned off by the whiny protagonist. It's fun, super addictive, and there's tons to do, but I would definitely wait a bit to see if the stuttering issue is addressed first. This video is made possible through generous fan donations on Patreon. If you've made it this far, it means you're ready for some spoilery fun. Get ready. While Pagan Min is not your father, he was your mother's lover and father to your half-sister whom your dad killed. In the opening sequences of the game, Pagan Min's forces violently take control of your bus and bring you before him where he serves you dinner, while some brutal torture sounds take place in the background. He steps away and says, Terrorists, right? Now, please, stay right here. Enjoy the Crab Rangoon. Don't move. I will be right back. If the player waits about 15 minutes or so, Pagan Min returns, and he flies you to your sister's burial site, where he lets you place your mother next to her, and then he celebrates your reunion. The credits then scroll. If you run off immediately with the rebels and tear things up through the countryside and play the 20 hour or so campaign and let Min live, he explains to you that he was planning on handing his kingdom over to you in the first place, which explains his always cordial behavior to you and why he genuinely seems happy to see you right from the start, in his own twisted way. I absolutely love this choice given to the player. It might be simple, and some may think this a cheap gimmick, but I personally feel this is a very reflective look at games, impulse, and motivation. More than simply making a few different mission choices for a second game replay, it completely changes the way you look at the game and the characters in it. I can think of only a few other games, or other pieces of media for that matter, that flip the entire thing on the player. You know who the jerk was running around shooting people and playing with explosives for no good reason? You were! Rebellion? What do you know of Kirat's way of life, or its infrastructure, or its politics, or its overall well-being? Nothing! You just chose to fly around in a wingsuit with your grenade launcher, stealing cars and killing endangered species. Just because. Otherwise, you'd be sitting down for a wonderful meal of Crab Rangoon prepared by a gourmet chef in one of the most exotic and beautiful places on the planet. Fantastic. <laughs> 